How you doing, everybody? Uh, we have our expert series with Jonathan Twomley today. How you doing, sir? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm doing great. This is a conversation I've been looking to have with you. As we know, I'm the residential guy, right? My asset price, let's just call it an average of, of 200 grand. You're the multifamily guy, right? Big syndicator. You're, you're doing it and looking at deals at 10, 20, 30, 40 million dollars. Well, there's been a lot of chatter about capital gains going up. There's been a lot of chatter about the stepped up bases going away. And just yesterday, there's been some talk about the 1031 exchange being significantly constrained. And I'm like, God, I'm so happy I get to talk to Jonathan tomorrow because I think he's targeting. I think th this administration's coming after the big boys and I'm just this little guy over here buying a house and you're buying this big stuff. So do you feel attacked yet? Well, you know, honestly, no. And cool. I'll tell you, and the reason, the reason is there are a couple of reasons for that I don't feel that way. Okay. First of all, I view this as very unlikely to pass, right? I think ah. it's, it's positioning. Gamesmanship. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's this, the 1031 exchange has been under fire ever since it was created and it was created like 80 years ago. Okay. And every, and, and it, you know, and I didn't even know this, but it actually, the legislation has its sunsetting. Mm. It's supposed to sun, every five years it sunsets mm. and it's every five years it's renewed. So it's, it's not something that um, I'm overly concerned about uh, okay? because I just don't think it's going to pass, right? I don't think, I, I just don't, I just don't think it's going to pass. Like it's not going to get through the Senate. Okay. Sure. There's no way. Um, I mean, I could be wrong, but I really, I just would be really, really shocked if it does. Cause, so, okay. So, cause, so, cause, so, so we'll talk about that one first. So the 1031 exchange just came out yesterday. They're talking about limiting the amount you can 1031 every, or I think it is every year, right? It's still proposal. So who knows where it lands, but right. they're basically capping it at some number. And the cap I heard is 500 grand, right? Right. So basically what they're, what this is clearly like, Hey, we're going to protect the little investor, mm -hmm. but the big guys, you guys are on your own. Pay up. And yeah, pay up. Um, and, and so, I mean, look, okay, so let's, let's, let's kind of a scenario yeah. plan this a little bit and see like what would happen if it does pass. Now, the, now, just before I get there though, I want to say the second reason that I'm not, I don't feel attacked about this is because as a syndicator, you usually can't do a 1031 anyway, mm. right? Because Good point. You, the way that, because as a, as a syndicator, what your investors are, what they own is a stock. They don't own a piece of real estate. So they mm. are not eligible for 1031. And so you don't go into this promising people that they can do tax-free exchanges. The only way that they can do it is if the entire entity buys the next property, then got you it. can do it. Lock, stock, exchange. and barrel. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if you got one investor who's like, no, I really, I, I want to, I need this money to pay for my kid's college next year. You can't do the 1031. So that has led people to do stuff, which is legal. It's legal, but it's, mm. But it's the IRS doesn't like it, and if you, if you get caught, there'll be problems. And also, there are other problems. What what the syndicators do to try to get a 1031 is they do what's called a drop and swap, which is a year or so before you sell, you change the form of the partnership from an LLC to a tenancy in common. Right? Ah. That way, everybody owns real estate directly, and they can all go their own ways when you sell. And the people who want a 1031 can 1031. <laughs> Drop so, and swap, you creative drop, people. Drop and swap. Um, the other thing is actually relevant to another, the next conversation we're going to have, which is the swap till you drop, uh -huh. which is the 1031 until you die. Yep. And then you get the step up basis. Uh, so, but the, they do drop and swap right now in order to take advantage of 1031. Hmm. Now, the problem with drop and swap is A, that if the IRS gets wind of it, if you don't do it right, you may be in trouble. The second piece of this is, and a lot of people don't focus on this, in a tenancy in common, you must have unanimity in order to do anything, right? Every part, so if you've got a tenancy in common, and just to make it simple, let's say you own 99% and you have a partner who owns 1%, that partner can veto everything you wanna do. Mm -hmm. They can they can literally stop you from doing whatever they want to because you have to have unanimity. And I I years ago somebody asked me if she, if I could help her solve a problem where she she was in a TIC where her grandparents had all, all bought all this property mm -hmm. and then the kids had inherited and then the grandkids had inherited 
Now there were 37 members of the TIC oh, and, and 35 wanted to sell. And the other two didn't want to. And she was like, what can I do? Well, you can buy them out. If you can come up with a price, you can buy them out. That's all you, that's the only that's thing it. you can yeah. buy them out and, and then do what you want to. So lots of people are, are, you know, doing this TIC and frankly, they're not, they're not thinking about the risk of like, who are they partners with? Yeah. And if, if you're in a, if you're in a, in a syndication, you know, with 50 other people, right. You don't know all those people. You don't mm -hmm. know that there's, there could be one guy out there who's like, you know what, I'm going to work this to my own advantage. Yeah. Could pay me. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so that, so that's a big risk. So, so as a syndicator, I'm not, uh, terribly upset about 1031. And frankly, okay. I can see some advantages to 1031 going away, namely, and we'll talk about this more in the next segment, mm -hmm. but that I think that 1031 distorts the market. Mm -hmm. it, it causes prices to rise higher than they ordinarily would without it because people are trying to, they're paying ridiculous amounts of money to do exchanges, mm -hmm. driving, and it drives up the price for people like me who want to buy deals at a good rate of return. Mm -hmm. So 1031, you know, I don't have any property right now that I'm invested in that I would need to exchange. But if I did, I probably, I wouldn't be exchanging it anyway because it's a syndication. So 1031 for someone like me, okay. if it goes away, really, this, this is not the end of the world at all. It cool. actually might make, might make things better. But let's answer the, the question. So, I, and I don't think it's going to pass anyway, mm -hmm. but um, let's just think about what would happen if it did pass, mm -hmm. if, if it is capped. Um, I think it is going to cause a lot of pain for a lot of people. I mean, I can't imagine that they would just cap it without having there be some kind of like uh, gradual implementation of it, mm -hmm. because there are some people who would literally be, be bankrupted by the sudden elimination of 1031. Yeah. So, uh, you know, people who are in a situation where they have, you know, refinanced the deal multiple times or even just one time, but they've refinanced the deal. They pulled out that cash out. Yeah. The cash is now invested in something else. Exactly. When they when they sell the deal, they literally don't have enough cash coming off the deal to pay the tax with because they've got to pay their mortgage back, right? Yep. And now they're in a big, they have a big problem, right? Yeah. So, well, that's that's exactly where I went. Is is you know as soon as you take cash out of a deal like that, you know, and and. and that's been very common for decades. So it's not like one-off stuff. That was like the thing, right? Go yeah. to value add, take off 20 million, go buy the next thing. You like kind of daisy chain it together. And um, what I was thinking is, yeah, they can't sell. So now they're just holding forever. Yeah. I mean, it's, you can't sell. You can't sell. Yeah. I mean, it'll, it'll, I mean, look for a, for a while, mm -hmm. it will um, cause the market to really, the liquidity in the market will dry. Mess. It'll yeah. dry up. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was thinking too. I mean, it'll, too. it'll, it'll, I mean, eventually like all markets do, you know, when you change the rules of a market, the market adjusts to the new equilibrium. Right? Of course, just, but it just, it's, it's rules. not, but it can be but unpleasant. The, the transition, yeah. the transition can be very unpleasant. Yeah. Right. So I think that this would have a, uh, you know, Regardless of whether 1031 is a good idea or not, yeah. and I think there's some there's a good argument that it's not, that something else would be better yeah. than this. Um, the, uh, you know, if it, if it has to be unwound, mm -hmm. like the, not only the elimination, but how it's eliminated is going to have a big effect on the market. And I don't think it's going to be good because, because so many people have baked 1031 into their expectations yeah. right from the get go. And people jump, who really. Yep really tax sophisticated. I mean, a lot of investors are not, they're just like, I want cash flow. I'm going to buy it. They're not mm -hmm. thinking about 1031 upfront, but I mean, for your more, and oh, that's probably you will why. at the end, trust me. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> sure. Absolutely. But I, but I think that's why also you have the, the $500,000 cap, but like, uh, for, yeah, yeah. for the small guys who are, are not tax planning. Yeah. Well, right. But for, uh, you know, but for the bigger fish who have who go into a deal thinking about, how, what's going to happen at the exit? Yeah, true. right. And how do I plan for that to be tax efficient? Um, it's it's going to upset all those expectations. So yeah. this is another reason why I think it's it's just not going to go through. Because yeah, the, let me because, let me drop one other thing on you because yeah. the other time, anytime you put a limit, and in this case we're talking five hundred k, 
um, I think it obviously distorts both sides of that number, right? So we've right. talked about the big side. That's where you play. If we switch over to where I play, I'm like, God damn it. We don't need more competition, right? Yeah. What, what, what could happen is, is people that were playing, you know, at the, at the 500K to a million or a million and a half, you know, slightly bigger deals, they could go, hey, we're not going to go there because over 10 years, or you know, 15 years, we'll be above that threshold. We're just going to go buy lots of individual houses. Well, yeah. And look, that, that I hadn't even thought of that, but this could, this could result, if you do that, it could result in exacerbating the affordability problem. Exactly where I went. I'm like, oh yeah. my God. Because if all these people start piling into the smaller houses just for tax reasons, it's going to drive up the price of those houses. Oh, and they'll be like unicorns. You'll never find an affordable house. Yeah, it's going to make things a lot more difficult. And all of the, uh, you know, the the hedge funds and private equity funds that are now going into the single family home market, um, they, you know, they will have even more incentive to yeah. do that. And it's just, just going to make it crazy. more and more more and more difficult for everybody. So I, I think I think that this is, you know, whether you think 1031 is a good idea or not, the, it's one of those things like, you know, when a bad idea is baked into the system, mm. getting rid of it can have really bad yeah. unintended consequences. So um, I, 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 that's another thing that would be really harmful about it. And mm -hmm. um, another reason why I think it's not yeah, it's not going to pass. I think when when cooler heads start thinking about you know beyond beyond the beyond the politics of it and beyond beyond the ideologies around it, right? When people st you know when cooler minds start thinking about what are the implications of this go of this happening, mm -hmm. I think that's going to cause some votes to be peeled off. Maybe people who were on the bubble about it or people who hadn't really thought about it that much, mm -hmm. um, but this is not going to help really anybody. Uh, yeah, so. for me, it's all about the demand side. I mean, I I figured, yeah, it's. I mean, we don't need more demand in yeah. affordable housing. I mean, that just frightens me to death. It's just yeah. so scary. I mean, if I were going to get rid of it, I would say the legislation I would write would say something like, "1031 thirty one is eliminated." You know, in what is it, twenty twenty one? Like in the year twenty thirty six. Mm. You know, done. Like you've got fifteen years left of this, but plan plan accordingly. And yeah. I think that would be. It would change the market, but people would, it's just like people acting with bonus depreciation right now. There are mm -hmm. a lot of people who, who went sort of, you know, nuts with bonus depreciation and opportunity zones and stuff mm -hmm. and all that stuff is, but there were like a couple of years and people kind of strategized yeah. around when they could do it. And now it's phasing out and people are yep. planning accordingly. So I think if they, if they were to get rid of 20, 10, 10, 1031, they would really have to say like, this takes effect, you yeah, know, later or, or they, or they scale it down. You know, it's like you get all of it for the next five years. And after five years, it's, it's scaling down until okay. it's completely eliminated. Otherwise you would just cause pandemonium. So. All right. So that's that one. Let's talk about the capital gains raise to 39% federal, which actually is more like 43 when you add in the Medicare or whatever bonus of 3% or whatever it is. And then you and I are in New York and California. So it really could be upwards of 53 or 56%. Yeah, and it's crazy. It's crazy, right? And when I think about this, the message is it only hits millionaires. But you and I both know when you own assets, and especially if you own assets for decades, it's not that hard to hit that number. Yeah. So again, I thought about the I th I think about the people that played by the rules, right? I think about the policeman, the teacher, really the people highlighted in the Millionaire Next Door, right? That that legendary book that that did it right, lived below their means, they bought a rental house every three or four years. Now they're 75 years old. Again, they played by the rules and they were looking to exit and they were happy to pay 20%, right? Cap gains, because they just wanted to be out. But now they're staring at 53% plus depreciation recapture. I did some math with the CPA over the weekend and they could pay, you know, they could lose 60, 61% of the gain. It's yeah. just crazy. Well, if 1031 stays in place then it won't matter because they can do they can do 1031 and they can even when they're old enough to retire there are vehicles that they can 1031 into that are basically passive investments like a like a delaware statutory trust or something so they could avoid they could still avoid all that tax okay. um so i so it really depends on whether 1031 sticks around now if, if let's assume 1031 is gone then, then yeah i mean this is going there's going to be 
I, again, I think what you're going to say, what you're going to see is people just not selling. Yeah. Right? They're, they're, they're going to say, uh, you know, can't it's, afford to sell. It's been a hard, can't. it's been a hard couple of years. I think about the mom and pop landlords a lot. Cause yeah. that's a lot who follows this channel. 2020 was all a year about your tenants can live for free. I mean, that was essentially the message. Yeah. And now you're like, damn, I'm done. I want to get out. And you're like, God damn it. I got to pay 53% of my cap gains and depreciation recapture. Why bother? I mean, it, yeah. and it, 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 the reason it feels bad is real estate is, is a long-term planning investment. So people, I, I talked to a couple of guys yesterday who started buying in the early 80s, right? And they're free and clear properties, right? As they should be, right? They yeah. were bought in the 80s. And they're like, Michael. I feel like I'm, you know, I feel like they, they, I was playing a game. I got to the end and they kicked over the board. Yeah. It's, and again, one guy I talked to never made more than 65 grand. He's like, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not one of these people, but you know what? I bought eight houses over a 12 year period. Oh, it's just heart wrenching. Yeah. Some of these stories. I, I mean, again, I, I think the, the, I don't think that Congress is thinking about those people. Right? Yeah, no, clearly. I think, I think I think I think Congress is thinking about like the hedge fund managers and you know stuff like that, right? So, so the so I think again, I think when cooler heads prevail and I start thinking through the implications of this, I think a lot of members of Congress are going to sit there and think like, God, how much tax am I going to have to pay on those properties that I own, right? And they're and I think that they're gonna they're gonna realize like, hey this if we if we don't keep 1031 this is going to look really bad and i you know so for for like for well i think they want it to look really bad i think there's i mean they've already they're talking about spending six trillion dollars yeah. right they, they want it to be bad they got it i mean they're if they're going to get through budget reconciliation which is the only avenue biden has left i mean he's got to show the taxes coming from somewhere this is a big old bucket yeah but like i said i don't think i don't think this is you know it could come down to Joe Manchin, and I just don't think that this is going to. We're going to bet on one guy. Oh, great! Well, and and, <laughs> and Kirsten Sinema, you know, okay, how would pronounce her name? But but I think, I, frankly, I don't think, I don't think it's even going to come down to them. I I think that hmm. I I just I, like I said, I think a lot of people. I I'm willing to bet you. I mean, look, Congress has become a millionaire's club. Let's let's be frank, right? Sure. And, yeah. uh. And I, I think that there are a lot of people in Congress on both sides of the aisle that are that would get really whacked by this. And when I start thinking about it, they're going to be like, hey, this is not really what we are intending here. I, if we're going after, I, I mean, honestly, like I think you could, what you could see is like the capital gains tax going up at 1031 surviving okay. to solve that problem for small people, right? Because for small investors, not small people, but small investors. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, because otherwise, like you said, th those people who basically have like, you know, worked hard and they saved their money. They played by and, the rules, man. It just yeah. drives me crazy. Yeah. Invested in, prop, you know, bought, com you know, modest properties. Yeah. One every three years. Yeah. And they, folks like those. Served a need. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Folks like these, like those who get, who can have most of their profit you know that's all they have i mean that's what they built yeah. with that plan i'm going to be yeah. 75 someday i'm going to have eight this guy i'm going to have eight free and clear houses and that's how i'm going to enjoy the rest of my life well listen you uh, may also but listen you may also and this kind of gets us into the stepped up basis issue in a moment but yep. you may you may also have people doing more cash out refis right well the, we, we, we well the big thing i talked to him about is dude well, I, and I've told my students this, I said, you know, you and I need to work out seller financing. I said, yeah. that's what we have to do, right? What other income sources do you have? Social security, whatever. Let's work out. Uh, and I had a CPA on the call. So let's work out a seller financing deal. So you stay under the 80K threshold. And if we stretch this out, you could pay zero capital gains if we just yeah. do, in, you know, so, I mean, there's ways you around also, it, but it still sucks. Yeah. You can also do what's called a deferred sales trust, which is essentially mm -hmm. a kind of like almost like a form of seller financing, but you never take the money doesn't come to you. It goes into a trust. So you don't have a taxable event mm -hmm. and then you can use the money to make other investments and stuff. So they're assuming that that stuff still exists, then there will be ways around it. But I mean, again, it'll, you know, anytime you change the rules, yeah, then that's, it, that's the thing is they play. Yeah. It just, we told them we, we, we always, we always complain about 
Americans not being financially literate. And then we have, you know, I don't know what, one, two, four, five percent of them doing the game right. And then they get right near the end and you freaking knock over the board. That's not okay. That is, that's wrong. So, ah, all right. Well, let's switch gears to stepped up basis uh, yep. because I, I actually think of the, all three things that we're talking about. I actually think the stepped up basis has the biggest chance of going away. Right. When we look at 53% capital gains, this new limitation of 1031 or losing stepped up basis, I think of the three, stepped up basis could be the one that is most easily removed. Yeah, probably because it's not, it doesn't have the same immediate impact. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you die. So what do you, what do you care? And, mm -hmm. um, and people don't really understand that it exists anyway. I think right. a lot of people probably feel like, Oh, well, somebody's going to pay the tax on this eventually. They don't realize that the <laughs> dropping that dropping dead is is a big. I mean, I mean, assuming that your estate is under the state yeah. cap, limit. The yeah, state, yeah, yeah, limit. Uh, that that dropping dead is like one of the best investment decisions you can make. Yeah. Uh, so um, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> this is one of my favorite nerdy real estate jokes. I mean, just I just always talk about how like one of the best things you can do for your investments is just. Drop dead. You know, drop, drop dead. So, <laughs> what do you think? Um, yeah, and a moment ago we were talking about this. You know, we talked about the, the drop and swap. Well, the swap till you drop is basically the the ten thirty one over and over and over again to to pyramid up, and then the dropping part is you drop dead mm -hmm. and you pass it all to your heirs, yeah. essentially Pink. tax tax free. Yep. Because um, you have the stepped up basis. You know. Now the reason for the stepped up basis, just by for background. Mm -hmm. You, in theory, have paid the tax. That's that's the the rationale for stepped up basis. And the idea is that everybody pays a state tax. Everybody owes a state tax. What if your estate is worth one cent or a hundred million? You owe a state tax, except you get an exemption mm -hmm. from state tax under the cap, mm -hmm. right? And so your estate is deemed to have paid the tax, except that you get. The, the exemption. Mm -hmm. So therefore, because the tax was paid, then your heirs get it at the current basis, right? right. That's the idea behind, behind stepped up basis. It's not that it's not that you don't owe tax. It's that you're essentially like in, a, in an accounting and tax meth way, you are deemed to have paid the tax that you owed, and therefore you get the stepped up basis. Um, so, you know, that being eliminated. I mean, one, one way they could eliminate it is they could just lower, they could just lower the threshold again. Mm -hmm. I mean, the threshold was $5 million for years and years and years, and then it was raised to 11 million recently. Mm -hmm. And this has like been a constant, like back and forth, mm -hmm. you know, depending on who's in power, it shrinks or it expands, but, you know, so they could, they could do that. They could effectively eliminate a lot of stepped up basis by just lowering the, 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 yeah. the cap again, um, back to where it was before. Yeah. Um, but if they just eliminate it completely, you know, I, I mean, this will not affect most people because most people don't have any investment assets at all. Mm -hmm. um, but for people in real estate, obviously those are who we're talking to, yep. but yeah, it's going to mean that if you, if it is eliminated, it's, it's going to mean that your heirs are going to have to pay all the capital gains tax. And again, I mean, I think this would be, this is just going to create the, it's just, it's, you know, used to be able to kick the, the can down the road with 1031 until you died and then it went away. Mm -hmm. Now it will just kick the tax headache to your heirs yeah. who will then have the same issues with like, if you refinance, you know, and, and they're not actually getting any cash out now, what do they do? Well, they're just, they're just not going to sell. Right. So um, they got to they get the cash from somewhere though. That's the problem with yeah. the heirs, right? If, if, if it's been 1031 in the mortgage, I mean, the, it'll get messy. I mean, well, I think, I think, listen, uh, I, yeah, it'll get messy. I think people are just going to, what's going to happen is that people will just keep on kicking the can down the road with refinancing, mm. right? They're just going to, they're just going to keep on, or, you know, some people who are really diligent will try to like pay down the debt, not, you know, not refinance, get it to free and clear. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's, it's hard to do with, commercial property because you have to refinance pretty yeah. much every 10 years. Right? right. So, uh, but people are going to have to be kind of disciplined and not take cash out and just refinance at the current principal balance mm -hmm. and, and pay it down. Uh, but I think, I think what's going to happen is that, you know, 
as with every rule change, like every rule change will impact the market mm -hmm. and people will try to evade whatever the new rule is, right? So, you know, just like now people try to evade the 1031 restriction on syndications by doing the drop and swap, mm -hmm. which is a, it's a gray area to say the least, <laughs> um, they will figure out other ways yeah. to avoid the tax. So the deferred sales trust guys are gonna, I mean, go into that business if this happens, right? Because that's gonna be a booming business. Right. Uh, seller financing, like you said, is gonna be probably a booming business. And I think you'll wind up that, you know, that could be an area for people to become experts in yep. and become, you know, like the expert who comes in as a third party and structures yep. the seller financing. Yeah, right? that's where I'm going. So, yeah. Um, so I think that like with everything, there's winners and losers for everything that yeah. happens, right? So, but the, but the big losers, I, I agree. I think people who just, you know, on the expectation that this was how things worked, mm -hmm. uh, they were, they're, they're going to have their expectations disappointed gravely. And, and, and I think also, we're going to talk about this more in the next mm -hmm. section, but frankly, I think it, it's sort of like a double whammy in some ways, because all of these favorable tax rules for real estate inflated the price of real estate. They, sure. they, dis they distorted the market. So if you were buying real estate under those conditions, you paid more than you would you have. You paid up, yeah. You paid up because of that stuff. And now to have it taken away means oh. it's, it's kind of like, you know, you wish you could be in the other situation where you, you know, suddenly Congress yeah. gave everybody this benefit and you own property. Now you get like a windfall mm -hmm. from the increase in price. But what yeah. you've had now is people paying or even sometimes overpaying because of tax considerations. Yeah. And now they have the rug pulled out from under them. It's really, you know, it's really a double whammy. So whether you think that it is a good idea, and I'm going to explain in the next section why some of these, so everybody, I mean, look, everybody's in real estate because they love the taxes, right? They love the tax benefits from it. Mm -hmm. So people are going to scream at me for saying these tax benefits distort the market, but they really do. And mm -hmm. so we, we could envision a, a world in which they, the, the rules were different and better mm -hmm. than they are now uh, and, and kind of understand how these tax rules really distort the market, but you know nobody sees the distortion because every it's like the fish we're all in it together. It. Yeah, it's like right. It's, it's like just, the, the fish, you don't the see the noise. Know, yeah. yeah, the fish doesn't know it's swimming in water. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So we're all in that. So we think like, oh, this is just the way it is. Mm -hmm. But um, but these things have distorted the market. So you could make an argument that they shouldn't exist, but that doesn't take away the fact that if you suddenly change the rules, it really messes up everybody's expectations, and it will have a a really negative impact yeah. on people who, who built their entire portfolios and oh, lives around, exactly. around those rules. Right. Yeah. So you don't change the rules at the end of the game. It drives me crazy. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Episode number three is going to be fun. We're going to talk about the fed inflation, buying frenzies, and of course, distorting the market via taxes. Thanks, Jonathan.